Uh, let's move on to local regression. So the idea with a piecewise polynomial was that we focus our attention to a part of the data. So instead of obtaining some global function, um, we, we get a number of local estimated functions because it makes sense to consider the, let's say, price of a house of this size that should not be affected by the price of a house of this size in the data set. So this idea of local estimation uh, makes you know, intuitive sense. So we can implement this idea of local estimation in a different way, and that gives us local regression. So local regression is based on some uh, weighted least squares that uh, works you know, pretty much something like this. Let's say, let's say the data that we have looks like this. So with local regression, what we're going to do is essentially having some sort of a window and only estimate the function for this window based on the data points that fall within this window. And we also care about the points that are at the center of this window more than those that are at the extremes. So this is as if we have some sort of distribution function, maybe some Gaussian distribution function here that defines we care about these points more than we care about this point for fitting a function in here. And then as we are you know, look, kind of estimating the uh, slope and intercept in a local way here for this part of the data, we would get some regression line like this. And we use the you know, center of this regression line and move the window over just a bit, right? Uh, but just to you know, give you an idea, I'm going to draw the other window here. But essentially, we're doing this again and again with, like, with a window that is sliding very gradually. So when the window ends up you know, being here, again, we're going to have our distribution, uh, which means that we care more about this data point compared to this data point. So this is not just a normal or daily squared univariate regression. This is a weighted least square in which the residual that we get from here matters more than the residual we get from this point. So that's going to give us some function like this. And then by you know, um, adding these estimates together, eventually we're going to have some nonlinear pattern that follows uh, the trends in the data. So the eventual function we get is going to have some nonlinearity capturing what you know, the overall trend of the data is in each of the time windows. So we get maybe a function like this in the end. So this is called local regression, and it is implemented in statistical software. So you just you know, um, mention, you, know, you just use the appropriate function, and it will be estimated for you. Uh, so this is you know, a different way of capturing nonlinearity in the data. Any questions about local regression? No? All right, so the last topic is generalized additive model, or GAM. So with generalized additive model, um, what we want to do is using different functions um, for different predictors. So let's say that we have a data set like this. So we have some x1, x2, and x3. These are different predictors. And we have y. So let's say y is wage. Um, x1 is maybe the, uh, maybe the experience. Um, X3 is the level of education. Um, and X2 is age. Level of education is, is a discrete variable, so it's a factor. It's a discrete variable. Age and experience are continuous, let's say. And then we want to model the data. So this is supervised learning, right? Uh, we want to model the data so that we have different functions for X1, X2, and X3. So our predicted generalized additive model allows us to capture nonlinear patterns, if we want, uh, as well as linear patterns. So it's going to be some intercept plus some function of x1, some function of x2, some function of x3, all the way to the you know, number of predictors that we have. So if you have p predictors, this is like some f1, this is some f2, this is some f3, and this is some f superscript p. We may decide that this one can be linear. This one can be polynomial of degree 2. This one can be smoothing spline, right? So with generalized additive model, we're keeping the general additive pattern of how the impacts of different predictors add up together to make up the prediction, because there's addition between impact of each predictor. But at the same time, these functions are flexible. They can be anything. They can be linear. They can be um, 
polynomial of different degrees. They can be splines, cubic splines, natural cubic splines, smoothing splines, and so on. So if the data that we have for these three predictors and wage look like this, uh, so maybe wage and years of experience. So this is our x1. So wage and years of experience, the data might be something you know, roughly like this. So it is not you know, perfectly linear, but we see that we can have a relatively good R squared if you just use a linear function. So then f1 becomes just a univariate regression of um, x1 and y, because this is already a good fit for this scatter plot. Then for age, as the predictor, um, maybe the pattern is, maybe it increases sharply, then it decreases a bit, followed by another increase, but not as sharp. Maybe the data looks like this. So if the data looks like this, just from you know, the change of sign, it seems like a polynomial of degree two, sorry, degree three, could capture this nonlinear pattern that here we have a drop somewhere in between, but the general pattern is that wage increases by age. Older people just have higher wage. Um, so then F2 would be a polynomial of degree three, right? So this is not just about you know, eyeballing these scatter plots, but maybe we try you know, polynomial regression and then you know, decide on the value D by cross-validation. But actually GAM, it is also implemented in statistical software, so it takes care of this for you automatically. You don't need to select these functions separately. But you can also uh, select them and determine them separately as user inputs. And then let's say for, um, for level of education, so this is a question for you. For level of education, which is x3 and wage, which is y, let's say the data looks like this. As you know, we just have factors, we have like levels of education, the data would be like this. So how do you think, uh, what do you think would be the suitable function for capturing this? Just one line? Well, I think, I think this is very simplistic. What if we want to use some nonlinearity? We can have piecewise. You know? So here, continuity actually doesn't matter for us because the, at least uh, you know, one could argue that there's distinction between this level of education and this one. So it's fine if the prediction for someone who has, let's say, you know, high school education is totally different from prediction of wage for someone who has a bachelor's, right? So this continuity is not really an issue. So here we can have, you know, different, um, essentially we can have these normal cut points essentially because these are just natural to the problem. When the variable is discrete, these cut points are natural. So then our function could be something like this. Essentially for each of them, we have just a, a linear regression and uh, I guess as long as they look like this, they are just vertical, it makes sense to predict them based on the average within that local region. So this is called a step function, but this is nothing other than some, some univariate linear regression in which beta one becomes zero. It becomes zero because you know, within this local, local area, x doesn't change at all. So the best prediction we can have is just finding the intercept. The intercept would be this. This is some beta zero that we're going to have for this region. So with GAM, we can have something like this, which is you know, very um, um, you know, interpretable. So in terms of explainability, um, this is something that you know, can be explained very easily. We say years of experience has a direct impact on wage. So for every single additional year of experience, we're going to have some beta one hat increase of wage. When it comes to age, it's a bit more complicated. So the pattern is nonlinear. Uh, in this age group, it pretty much increases. Then in this age group, it decreases. Then maybe this, in this age group, um, again, we have an increase. Maybe they end up in you know, different positions, right? Maybe they, when they, are, they pass this limit of age, maybe they get some you know, executive jobs suddenly. So then it, then it increases by age. And then here, you can see that there are averages of age for different levels of education. So then um, you know, the, the, the wage of one person is a result of this prediction plus this prediction plus this prediction. is a result of their years of experience and age and level of education. So this is generative, gen generalized additive model. Any questions? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's something similar to 
it's something similar to this. Um, but each piece of this function turns out to be just, just a line with a slope of zero. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah? That, 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 that would be here, right? There is some intercept. This is some, let's say, basic wage that uh, one person would have, just regardless of these, right? This is just the intercept. Um, and these are going to be estimated. Sorry, I forgot about this. This is some estimate, right? Also, this f is going to have parameters that are estimated. So if you don't mind, I'm going to also put hats here. F, f values are not, f is not just a, you know, just one variable. f is a function, but the parameters of that function will be estimated by the statistical software. Yeah. Yeah, the software makes sure that, um, yeah, that these estimates would, you know, uh, give us the lowest RSS. Any other questions? All right, so that's it for today. Thank you very much, and see you next week.